guys and welcome back to MDPV and today's episode is going to be all about being young, black and Muslim. Hope you enjoy. So I ask you guys how you feel like your um, religious upbringing has impacts you, impacted you when it comes to Islam and how have your parents like shaped you into how you are today? I'll go first. Um, I feel like for me, um, my mom definitely had a role to play in terms of how I view the religion. Um, because when I was younger, she made me go to like a um, madrasa. So okay. from then, like you learn about Islam, you learn about the Quran, but then like you actually taught the meaning of the Quran rather than just like being learned, like being taught like Fatiha or whatever, you, you understand the meaning of Fatiha. And then I think once you do that, it makes it easier for you to then follow the religion, if that makes sense. Because like you're like, you're understanding the meaning behind it and <clears throat> why you do certain things and why you don't do um, certain things, you know. And so my mom actually allowed me to sort of find my own path to Islam, if that makes sense. Like she gave like, gave me like the foundations or whatever, but she didn't force it upon me. Kind of just like, I'll give you the tools and now it's up to you to sort of decide whether or not you're going to continue to follow it, kind of thing. Nice. Um, personally, my mum, obviously, I come from Guinea-Bissau, which is a country that has, like, um, there's a lot of people that are Muslim, a lot of people that are Christian. But I would say, in terms of the the strength of the religion, there's a bit of too much of mixing of culture. So I would say that my mum, unfortunately, she didn't have that much knowledge, but she had, like, the basic knowledge of Islam, <coughs> like, in terms of, you know, the, the prayers and stuff. So growing up, it was just me and her. So I don't think she was able to teach me much about it because I think I kind of grew up not knowing much, just knowing like the basics just, or yeah, Muslim and Prophet Sallallahu that's all I knew. So then I think it was when I came to the UK that I think I kind of got more in touch with my um, Muslim identity and understanding more the importance, you know, of actually being a practicing Muslim. So I think it was like later on, but I think growing up, I was just like kind of just living life, like kind of jahili in it. So. It wasn't really the best way <laughs> of living life, but when you say mixing culture, what do you mean? Because I feel like so a lot of black parents mix culture a lot when it comes to the deen, and they conflict it, which is quite yeah. Annoying. So if we think about um, the west coast of Africa, there's a lot of practices that are done that are kind of mixed mixed of culture. It could be like from visiting marabus to um, a female. So they, 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 they might not know what marabu is. So what say <laughs> marabu is like um, judge. Yeah, like oh, them whoa. people that do like like they they'll they'll get in touch with the 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 world of the jinn to make things happen for you. So it's like yeah, okay. it's shit, it's involved. yeah shit. And they and they kind of in a lot of communities they seen as like the the go tos the the sheikhs and stuff, the big <coughs> oh, people. No, no, but no, it's no, like scary. a lot of their practices <laughs> are, are wrong. So it's like a lot of people I would say in a lot a lot of the communities it doesn't matter what country, but in the West Coast it's very it happens a lot. So people just see them as you know the knowledgeable people that everyone goes to and that everyone wants to you know um, get things from whatever. So that's kind of the culture aspect. And also like I don't know like there's an example of, a lot of people will know about this probably not in the West Coast anyways. But there's this thing where when people get married, there's the white sheet kind of, um, oh I don't know if you guys heard of it. Like you, you get married and then you have, you know, sex with your wife or whatever. And then the white sheet is it's used. If there's blood, if there's blood, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and obviously that's obviously haram. But a lot, lot, if you go back then, you tell them that they don't listen to you. They'll be like, what are you talking about? So what did they use the white sheet for? To, to see if there's blood. See if there's blood, yeah. to see if they, if, if they were virgin. Yeah. And what happens if there's no blood? They'll, they'll basically think that you're not a virgin. Yeah. Mm. But that's then literally not... Huh? Then it's, it's an issue. Yeah. Because and that actually happens in some cultures that they literally yeah, do say, it. Like, like I've seen videos of people yeah. like holding up to say that there was blood to just confirm yeah, that. Like, is that more of a, like an African thing? That's nah. a cultural, cultural thing. thing. Yeah. It's not I feel like, I feel like it's an Islamic thing. Yeah. Like it's a, lot, a lot of like cultures outside of Africa do it as well. How oh, is it? Mm. In Africa. So it's, yeah, I it's don't think it's an Islamic thing. No, I think it means culture. It means culture. Yeah, let's not cultural. say Islamic before they say Islamic. <laughs> like, <laughs> a, 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 a cultural thing within like Islamic countries, as in like yeah. they do that. But I wouldn't say it's an Islamic thing. It's a cultural thing that a lot of Muslims or religious people tend to do. Because a lot of um, Christians or who are quite religious, they do the same thing as well. It's not just like a... Yeah, uh, that, that kind of thing. I think it also depends on your country yeah. as well because I'm Nigerian and I've never heard that being done Nigeria, in Nigeria. Nigeria as well. 
I've never, it, I've I've never, never heard it being done by country, but it's definitely they do not people do it. But like, like the popular, like the village, yeah. like the popular backwaters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But like the seat that's not, but not like the backwaters. Mm-mm-mm. Definitely a thing. Mm. Yeah, I would say I would say that these things happen because the people that are usually at the top of you know the knowledge, you know, in terms of imams and stuff, they're the ones that bring the knowledge to the areas. So it's like people are gonna be limited. Um, with knowledge, because for example, we have internet and stuff, so we can find out the truth and stuff. We can go to different mosques, whatever, speak to imams. But the people in the villi- in villages and stuff, because I would say my mom comes from a s- very small place, so it's kind of limited in terms of knowledge. So it's like you're gonna get it from like one main person, and they can literally just mm. put you in the wrong path mm-hmm. in, in in certain things. So that's why, like, when I was growing up, my mom didn't have them. Like, sh- she couldn't tell me stories of prophets, for example. She wouldn't mm. know things. So it's like, these are things that I had to go and learn for myself. So that's why a lot of times I kind of relate with Reverts because I feel like I was, I just had like very, very small knowledge of, of Islam, of my identity as a Muslim. And then I had to kind of go and learn all the basics. So yeah, that's what I'd say. I grew up in quite a strong Muslim, Nigerian um, community. We had like a we have a, like a mosque that we go to. Okay. I think yeah, okay, road, yeah, man mosque. Um, so yeah, so that's something. My parents when they came here, they I guess they situated in finding the masjid. And as grow, as I grew up, they ensured I was like a part of that community. Aka, I went to madrasa, had like friends and f- friends, and still are friends with a lot of the people from there. So I think that also like guided me and I guess kept me I guess stead yeah, grounded in the faith having I think being around people that you can relate to that you can look back to UK you're you're, you're the same because I think there's like a big shock when people say oh like you're Nigerian and you're Muslim it's like oh are you a river or but it's like there's actually a lot of Nigeria there's not a lot of Muslims in Nigeria that just comes from a place of people that have been Ignorant. Yeah. Oh. Lots of black people are Muslims and especially a lot of Nigerians. I mean, like, Nigerians, I think, it's, I feel like it would probably be, like, 50-50. I feel like it's more like Muslims than, than the Christians, like, you know. But, you know, I think... Like, slightly, like, like a, a slight more, slightly more. I'm sure. I don't... I heard it's in the north that there's, there's more of them. There's, yeah, there's, there's north. There's, like, a tribe. The, the houses. The houses. The houses yeah. They're predominantly Muslim. Okay. However, like, I'm Yoruba. And as I would say, like, it's literally, like, probably, like, 50-50. Okay. And I think back home, I think... In Nigeria, like everybody does everything. Like Christmas, everyone would celebrate yeah. Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not Europe is the intermarry, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christmas, everyone would do Christmas. Like, they don't let it divide them. I yeah, jumps, and I think it's well, because that's like a good such an amount of intermarrying. It kind of gets confusing for people. Do you know what yeah, I mean? I've heard, the, I've heard the phrase chrysalum. I was, I was yeah, gonna, but that's, I, not that's like my barber. He was like, he celebrates both. I was gonna say. <laughs> um, that happens in my country as well. There's a lot of interfaith marriage, but I think my, in my viewpoint is that people, again, culture being the main thing, people kind of yeah, they, connected they identify culture. themselves as culture. Yeah, first, so I'm yeah. Yoruba first, then Muslim second. Mm. Yeah, so mm. if you go and speak to them and stuff, a lot of people, like a lot of people that have like parents that have both faiths, the parents are kind of chill in terms of their religion. Mm. They're not really like super strong. Not not all not all of them in there, but. That's what I've noticed, and, mm. and even in my country, I'd say the same thing. A lot of people grow up without falling either religion as well. Mm. They're just vibing in it. But <laughs> yeah, I think I grew up in a strong Muslim Nigerian household, including like having that kind of um, community where we can go. We go to madrasa. We used to have like a thing like youth. So even when you grow up, you have like a like a youth group. So in that the youth groups, you're like talk about faith, like during Ramadan, they will hold like. Um, not like services basically yeah. but it's like basically and because obviously it's people your age so you have that kind of sense of community these are people who you've probably grown up with so i'd say that has definitely helped me and staying like grounded in my faith in you know current current times <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> what was the question, sorry? how has your like your, your upbringing shapes your view on islam and your understanding of islam like um religion? i'd say I owe a lot to my mum because my mum's from a, a interfaith marriage. So my grandma was Christian, but my granddad is Muslim. So when my mum had me, she was kind of like, not on the fence, but do you know, kind of on the fence sort of thing. But for as long as I can remember, I've been raised Muslim. But when I was like a toddler, maybe like one or two, I think she decided to take the religion seriously, her dad's religion. So for as long as I can remember, I've been Muslim. So then she married my stepdad, who's a revert as well. Then from there, um, 
for as long as I can remember, I've been around a, um, a strong Muslim background, even though I've got a lot of uh, Christian family. So it's a thing where I've got a very good understanding and exposure to both, but I've been raised in a Muslim household and I've learned a lot. I've gone to madrasa, I've gone to Saturday classes. So it's like, I have taken in a lot of knowledge, knowledge which still stays with me today. So yeah, I'd say I'd ha I've had a good, um, good upbringing Islamic wise. Okay. <coughs> um, I guess my upbringing is completely different to you guys <coughs> because I'm a revert. So I was born into a Christian household. My mom's a Jehovah and like, yeah, my dad, uh, my grandparents on, well, my dad's parents are pastors, own a church, everything. So I was literally born into a Christian family. But in saying that, I wasn't born into like a strict Christian family. I knew like, cool, we're going to church on Sunday, all of this stuff. I knew the Bible and whatnot. But my family isn't like, you have to do this and you have to do that. They allow you to find your own feet, whether like in anything, including religion. And I felt like when my grandma passed on my dad's side, I kind of just fell out of touch with Christianity. I wasn't going to church on Sundays anymore because there would be a point where me and my auntie on my dad's side, my dad's sister, we would go to church together. And it's not like I ever needed somebody to take me to church, but it was nice going with my auntie. But like I said, when my grandma passed, like I just stopped going. I just didn't really feel connected anymore. And that's where I felt like I fell deeper into Islam. And I remember I wanted to take my Shahada in college. So this could have been like 2016. I said it to a previous friend of mine. I was like, yeah, I want to take my shahada. She was Muslim as well. And she was like, you're not ready. Like, you're not serious. Like, you're still going to live a life of sin and all of this stuff. And I was like, no, no, no. Like, I want to take my shahada. She was like, no, like, come back again when you're ready kind of thing. And I was like, okay, cool. And I just left it as that. And my best friend here, she's Muslim. I've been around her for as long as I can remember. Every time I go into her house, all I'm seeing is stuff to do with Islam. My, it's I've, like that, like we have like weird <laughs> No, what I'm saying, like you walk in and like, do you get what I mean? So, and then like, I do have a few family members as well who are um, Muslim, like a few cousins and stuff like that. So I think I went to Dubai in 2019. And then when I came back, I said to my best friend like, yeah, cool, I'm ready to take my Shahada. And it's not like I'm always messaging Mariam like, oh, send me this, send me that. I literally went and did my own research, read about what I needed to find out. Because when I said it to my friend back in 2016, as much as I might have not actually been ready, I was in my head, I knew that I wanted to take my shahada and become a Muslim. So when I've gone to Mariam now, taken my shahada um, and everything, I was happy. I was like, yeah, cool, I'm a Muslim now. Like, I'm gonna go, still continue to do my own research. So, Cause Mariam can, like you said, give me the tools, but I actually have to like do this stuff by myself because it's my own personal journey. Her journey and my journey is different. She was a born Muslim, I'm a reaver. I need to go and find out extra stuff. So cool, that's like 2019 now. And like my Eureka moment happened in 2021. Oh, I'm gonna get to that, but it's okay. Should I wait? I was gonna ask you what enticed you because I've always found okay. it like, I always like to know why people turn to Islam. Cause I feel like when you're born into it, we're just, we're born into it, right? We all find our own individual journey. But when yeah. you're like a Christian, what actually makes you leave that religion to say, I want to follow Islam? Like I always find it interesting when people, cause it's a big change to yeah. like, leave another religion. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you like, really I, Muslim, I, so. I just felt like I fell out of touch with Christianity. That's all it was. As much as like, like I said, I was born into a Christian household and everything. My parents aren't strict Christians. They have their own journey. They're doing their own research into Christianity. It's not like it's in my face every day, like kind of thing. I know like when I would go to my grandparents' house, we would do like Bible studies every Sunday and whatnot, but that's only as, that's only gonna take me so far. I'm gonna still have to do it myself, but I just wasn't in tune with it. So yeah, when I've come to Islam now, I felt like I, ha I found my purpose in a sense of 2016, going to college, going to uni and everything, I would actually, I was just wayward. Like I was just out here living life, not having any sense of direction. Whatever, if you told me Dejana, let's go out at 3 a.m. I would go out at 3 a.m. Like it was just weird. But when I converted to Islam, I was like, it gave me more, like I felt more solid. I knew who I was living my life for. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew everything that I do in this life will affect me in the afterlife. So I wanted to do everything with a pure heart, pure intentions, everything was just clear. And can I go to my re Eureka moment? Okay, in a second. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so my upbringing, I'm out of Oh yeah, my upbringing. Um, yeah, I think like my upbringing was good. My dad was very, 
my parents were not strict, but they made it very clear, like, all my dad actually cares about is us being Muslim. Like, he doesn't care. He would say, I don't care if you, like, you're a cleaner, no offense to any cleans or anything. As long as you have Islam, that's all that he cares about. Mm -hmm. So he made that very, very clear to us. Um, he was very, we had to go to Madrasa. Like we, I went to Old Kent Road Mosque as well. So we literally used to go there all the time. And yeah, he just very made, he made it very clear to us how to pray and everything. And he did his part in just showing us the way of life and Islam. But I would say when I was younger, it was more of a thing where we just had to do it. I didn't understand. Like, I knew I was Muslim, and I, but I knew everything. Well, oh, no, you can't do that. Or maybe you can't speak to boys. Like, I just knew that I just couldn't do that. So there was a bit of a fear to not do things, but I just didn't get I didn't have that love. But I feel like I grew to have that love. But my parents, but I'm kind of happy with the way I was brought up because it just made sure that I didn't indulge in certain things, which I'm grateful for at the age I'm at now because it prevented me from probably living a wayward life or just doing things that would go against my religion and that would cost me in the long run. So I was very happy with that. Um, yeah, my mum, she covers herself. My dad, all he does is literally work and go to the mosque. So I have two parents that just really showed us like the importance of life and what matters to them. Mm -hmm. So I'm really, really grateful for that. Um, they were not straight, obviously I don't wear hijab. So I'm not saying I make some straight or anything, but like he mm -hmm. didn't sit me down. Like when I, was, I, when I was young, I didn't wear hijab, but when I got older, let's say like maybe secondary, even college, like my dad would be like, come on, like, please wear it. You look so nice. Like, my dad hates it when I look like this. Like, he wants me to have braids, like, you know, the wig braids under, like, all back. That's <laughs> the, when I wear that, he'll be like, you look so pretty. But he hates when I, not that he hates it, he just thinks, like, why do you need to wear all of this? Mm. But he never forced me. But now he doesn't say anything. I guess I'm older now. So just, like, I know what I need to do. So if you don't do it, that's on you sort of thing. Mm. But as a father, inshallah, when he dies, I can say that my dad did everything he needed to do to show me the way of mm -hmm. Islam. But um, yes, okay, another Eureka. Oh, so I wanted to ask you guys, um, how important do you think it is for you guys, for you to find Islam yourself? Because even if you're born into Islam, there's always probably something that happens or you have that one moment in your life where you're like, I need to turn back to Allah or something that just, you know, makes you forcefully turn back to Allah. And for me, I know what happened to me, but some, <laughs> someone can start off like, what was the Eureka moment in your life or how, and how important was it for you to, or how important is it for you to seek Allah by yourself, even if you're born into Islam. So. Shut up. Shut Just start. Yeah. Oh. Kind of <laughs> dying. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. you know what happened to her, boy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically, like I said, um, I was li not living a wayward life and stuff like that, but I was just like, partying, having fun, all of that stuff. And that's nothing to like, I don't want anyone to say like, this happens because you're Christian or whatnot. Like I said, I fell out of touch with Christianity and I was just doing my own thing. Took my shahada, became a lot, not, not a lot more serious, but more grounded. But I was still like, just here and there. Then like, cool, 2021, um, I went out one night, like a random Tuesday night, and I ended up in a car crash like literally the craziest car crash I've ever could imagine in my life. And from that moment on, because I'm still here today, I say it's all praise to Allah because he's the only person that got me out of that car. Because if you ask me like how I got out of that car, how I'm still standing here when I had like my leg half open, my jaw swinging, I couldn't tell you. I can only say it's because of Allah. And I think from that moment on, I realized that nothing else matters because my life could have been gone just in that split second. So that I feel like that made me dive even more into my faith and realize that I can't be out here just happy to go out at 2 a.m. on a Tuesday evening. Like that doesn't make any more, that doesn't make sense to me anymore. What I need to be doing is like going to Islamic classes and finding more about Islam because that really and truly, that's the only thing that matters in this life. That's all I have. And that's literally my eureka moment. Like from that point on, I feel like, I don't know if my own can vouch for me, but I feel like I've found so much more on my own journey. Like I said, like I took my shahada, but I don't know, I was doing like research here and there, but I wasn't like every night going to read my Quran and stuff like that. But now like, I'm so happy. I'm so proud to be Muslim. Like any chance I can, I will speak about it. Even if like to non-believers, I'm happy to sit there and talk to them about it. Like there's nothing that can deter me from Islam. What was your parents' reaction when you took it down? Um, fine, like- Her mum was calm. Like, my parents were so there because I couldn't even, <laughs> like, I will never leave Islam anyway, but I couldn't even dare, like- Yeah, I know, but what, what was your parents' reaction? My parents are very much so, like, easygoing parents. Like, 
it was never a thing where I had to go into my room and shyly pray or like take off my hijab and not see like see my mom. Like even when it comes to fasting now, like my mom is very like conscious. Like she will make sure or oh, like leave Dej's food for when she needs to break fast or like I won't play this or I won't do that simply because of my religion. Like my parents are very much so respectful. Like. I literally just walked into the front room one day and said, yeah, my mom, I'm a Muslim. Like, I took my shahada. But I feel like it's because your mom has, like, examples. Because me and Dajon are best friends. Her mom knows me. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, so my mom, like... She'll be thinking... She'll sort me for my own. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> it was just more... I feel like she became more disciplined. I feel like, as your best friend, I feel like you had more purpose. Yeah. Like, you were met more like, okay, at least now I know I respond to Allah. You've become more intentional. Yeah. I would say that. And I feel like, yeah, your mom was calm with it because it just made you a better person. Literally. Say. Like, so. yeah, my parents are very much so cool. That's good stuff. What was you guys' moments where you just felt like, yeah, you have to start practicing for this? I don't, I don't really have a Eureka uh, moment as well. I think mine was um, a couple years ago. I was still in my Jahiliya times. Um, <laughs> You're outside. I'm, was, I'm, I'm outside. Ramadan. I'm not going to be outside this summer, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually not. I'm actually going to try my hardest because... <laughs> Sometimes I, I might love it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, I'm actually trying because it's so, you know, it's so crazy. Sorry, not to cut you off. <laughs> not to cut you off, but like sometimes like the outside, I'm trying, but it's just like everything on the outside is actually haram. That's what I'm saying. I don't care. Everything That's is haram and it's just like, obviously it's kind of hard when you just like to enjoy yourself and have fun and just look good. and But everything is actually haram. So in other ways though. Sorry? You can enjoy yourself in other ways. You have to like, think positively enough. You have to just remove yourself from that way of thinking and, you know, see a way to enjoy yourself where, you know, nothing is going against you. Yeah, because like, I, yeah. I never feel good. Like, even when I go out, obviously, I don't drink it. And, like, I'm at, let's say, a day party and someone pulls alcohol. Like, it makes me want to scream, but it's just like, marry me in that environment anyway. What do you expect? Do you get what I mean? Mm. Of course, someone's going to, like, that can happen because I put myself in that environment. Mm. Um, but no, I totally agree with you. I just, yeah, may Allah make it easy no, for us. No, 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 no. It's not easy, but then again, as you said, it does start with mindset. Because if someone, let's be real, came to me today and said, Mariam, I'm going to give you two million pounds, don't go to no day party. I'm not going to be. <laughs> I know, let's be real though. You're not. But obviously, 100%. Allah's basically telling us not to do it. Do you know, I know it sounds crazy, but like, God's told us yeah. not to kind of do certain things, but because. We can't see him. I don't know how to describe it, but like... Sometimes our desires just get the best of but us. As, yeah, as, get... as I've grown older, cer certain things that are haram, when I was young, I was thinking, oh, I can't do, really do anything. This is haram, that's haram. But as I've grown older, certain things I start to know why it's haram. Mm -hmm. For sure. That like, makes more sense. For sure. So it's not just like, oh, don't touch the, the, the stove, don't touch the stove. But when you now touch it and it's hot, you're like, that's why we told you don't touch the stove. Mm. I feel like um, a reason why a lot of people, like, like born Muslim that had, you know, str uh, they struggled to, you know, kind of get into Islam properly and stuff. You know, a lot of parents would just kind of tell you this yeah. haram, this halal. You wouldn't yeah. actually, you know, bridge it and you just, just feel make like you you're understand. Restricted, like I yeah. can't do everything this, I can't do so that. That's what I was saying yeah. earlier. I feel like everything is just so in your face. They they don't really like sit you down and have like proper nice conversations or follow the prophet, like follow the disciple. They don't make you feel that love. Yeah. So from not all, but some parents mm -hmm. they don't give you that type of like. Make you love it, and yeah. like, that's why, like, if you can see this Ramadan, like, for example, people are putting decorations up to get their kids to enjoy it and stuff, and then people mm -hmm. are commenting like, "I think that's good." Like, yeah. Christians do it. Why can't you put a little decoration so you can start to feel it and feel like involved? But I think as well, that's why, like, um, it's important the madrasa you go to because, and it's important to like when you do learn to learn the Quran as a whole, not just like a surah in the Quran. But you know what, do you know what I mean as well. Exactly, mm. because then you understand as you said, like why you do certain things and why you don't, you don't do certain things. So when you are at that stage, you don't think, oh, as a Muslim, I can't have fun. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. Like you're able to have fun, but my brother said here, in different ways. You still have fun, but you just can't do certain things that we've been programmed to think is the only way to have fun, mm. you know? I was even gonna say, obviously based on the society we're in as well, <clears throat> obviously we're in the UK, people like a lot, like the English people will just go out to drink for anything. Like for them, that's fine. Yes, you know, you're to go to work drinking allow me, man. Just give me my apple juice, like allow exactly. me. So like. the society in the you know the spaces you get in, like this is where you're gonna see what's that's what what's around you, and you're gonna think, yeah, this is what is fun. But maybe if you go to a Muslim country, people do completely different things. You're, and obviously, if you go there, coming from here, you're gonna be like, oh, this is what people think is fun. But it's yeah. like they kind of programmed because that's that's what they've been around the whole time. But then so again, don't you say that's why it's our environment. Because if yeah. you went to Saudi Arabia, you can easily be like a proper good Muslim because you wouldn't even want, you can't even, not saying you can't sin, there's something you can't even do in that country anyway, so prevent you from doing it. But here 
in the West where we are, there's a lot of that we can do. Haram's glorified here. So when you don't do haram, you're looked at weird. Do you mm. get what I mean? Like, if I say to someone I don't drink, it's just like, oh my God. You don't have drink? People always ask me, how do you have fun? <laughs> and I actually kind of feel offended. Like, it's so, <laughs> it's so annoying because, but then again, to but us, then, that, that should be the norm. You learn to have fun in other ways as well. Yeah, but I'm just yeah. saying that should be the norm. But like, if you went to like those Muslim countries, you can't even do certain things. So it's easier to kind of practice. So I feel like your environment is really, really important. How do you navigate then the like the debate with like Dean versus Dunya um, and like controlling your desires? Like, what do you do personally that helps you? Because we all sin, let's be real. We're all sitting here. Like, well, no one's perfect, by the way. We all sin. We know that. But like, how do you limit probably? I see it as... Um, this life's a test. That's how we see it as in Islam. We see it as this life's a test. And same way if I was applying to like Harvard or Oxford or whatever, if it was easy for me to get into Harvard, I'd be like, something's wrong here. Same way if Islam was easy for me to just do, mm-hmm. I'd be like, something's not right here. So the fact that my religion's a bit difficult, there's certain things I'm not allowed to do, that mm-hmm. shows me that I'm on the right path. That means that at the end of the, if I pass this test, in the afterlife, in, in if I get to Jannah, inshallah, sure. there's gonna be inshallah. there's gonna be things that are a million times better than mm-hmm. this temporary mm-hmm. enjoyment mm-hmm. that we see in this world. So even though I sin, I go out, I do stuff or whatever, mm-hmm. that's what people can see, but people are not seeing yeah. what I'm doing behind, behind closed the scenes. Mm-hmm. They don't that's know that, that you're praying that's, for that's, that's getting these Facts. these sins removed. You're yeah. not seeing when man's making wudu and I'm washing my face, washing my hands, all the sins that I've I, I done with my hands and my face, they're all getting washed away. Mm-hmm. But they just see me out, they just see me do this, but they don't know right before that, I was praying, right before that I fasted. But mm-hmm. these are stuff you're not gonna see, it's just between me and God. Yeah. So how I see it is, we all sin, and I remember, this is a hadith, one, I think it's a hadith, that um, I always it always stays with me and, and, I, and I love it, and it says, um, Allah created us as sinners, and if we wasn't sinners, He'd remove us and put, more people. and put people on the earth that are sinners so that they can ask him for forgiveness and he can forgive them. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's how I see it. And especially when Ramadan comes around as well, I always take it seriously. So obviously I'm a, I'm very like open about my life or whatever. People see me go do activities, go out, have fun, etc. Okay. But at the same time, when it's Ramadan, I show them that although men's partying and doing, doing whatever nonsense you see me doing, I still don't forget my salah. I still mm-hmm. don't forget my religion. And... I don't plan to live like that forever. Mm-hmm. Like one day it is gonna stop, and mm-hmm. well, it's just yeah, inshallah. That's just <coughs> it's temporary enjoyment, but it's not it's not the be and all for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's how I deal with it. I'd say thing the way I kind of try and operate is just obviously main thing plan my day around my salah. So that's like always my my the center of everything that I do. Um, in you know trying to avoid spaces or like things that I know that if I stay there for too long or if I go there, if I go too far or whatever, it might put me in a bad position. Mm. Like I kind of just, I don't know, I think I, I think about a lot of the things that I might do and stuff. And, you know, just, I, I kind of keep my life simple, as, as simple as possible. Wow. And, you know, just stay close way. to my prayer <laughs> mark, stay close to the mosque, stay inside the mosque, you know, do things that are beneficial for me. And yeah, like I don't. Were you always like that? No. Nah. Definitely so not. It's just something that I keep trying to improve as much as possible. Um, you know, I think every Ramadan is <clears throat> is a time to reset. You know, what you want to do for the rest of the year. How you gonna, you know, take your life. <coughs> sorry, how your life is gonna go forward. And I feel like you know, this another Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, we made it, and mm-hmm. and it's another another month to reflect and to try and plan your 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 year ahead. I see a lot. We plan a lot. A lot of plans. Are the ones that stay, but. Um, you know, just trying to improve day by day, man. Because uh, uh, no one's perfect. Again, like we all say, no one's perfect. You're gonna, you're gonna have some shortcomings and stuff, but you know, seeking Allah's forgiveness every time you do something, or just in general, and just trying to get up and keep going in. Because life don't stop. My environment, I um, didn't, yeah. I didn't have a lot of Muslim friends when I was growing up. Mm. So because of that. I was always, what's that thing? Um, fear missing out, fear missing oh. out. Fair kind of thing. That's it. So like, I'll try certain things. Yeah. Just to be like, oh, I'm not missing out. Or so that you might fit in a bit more, mm-hmm. you know. But eventually you're like, oh, no, it's not for me. It's and then you understand that good metal religion, there's a reason why yeah. you shouldn't be doing these things. Yeah. You know, that was, that was my... Mm. Um, yeah, I agree with actually what you're saying. Um when you actually have to seek Allah for yourself, I think it's more beautiful. Obviously, yes, we're all born into Islam, but 
as I said, everyone has that moment. So for me, I feel like the moment in my life, I'm not gonna go into details about it, it's better not. Um, but I would say, I was in a situation and I would say I was probably, um, whatever the situation I was in was making me put Allah like last. And you should never do that because God's a jealous, Allah's a jealous God. And it's just like, how can you put, let's say, the creation above the creator and stuff. And I started to not be disciplined when it came to praise and stuff. like. And that's when I knew the situation I was in was not the best. And then Allah showed me that you can do anything, but you can only rely on me. Mm -hmm. So I had a situation where I could only rely on Allah and any single time I've relied on Allah, he's never failed me. Like every, every little thing that happens, even like, for example, with this, this was supposed to be September. You remember last yeah. year, there's a girl that was supposed to be part of this talk and she didn't end up coming. And it was just like Sam here and Dab's, was here and I was gonna get upset because I was getting really really annoyed because I was thinking I've wasted their time and like this hasn't happened and I was thinking why and I remember you guys were saying to me like it's probably Allah's like, is it, like the cutter of Allah like don't worry you will be able to do this and just like obviously Alhamdulillah we're doing it today but like any single time something hasn't gone right in my life it's gone right in my life like it hasn't gone my way and if it's gone Allah's way like I'm so I'm so grateful like every, every single time I speak everything I say is always inshallah like if Allah will when, when I was young I never used to say that like for example my mom would be like she's I'll see you tomorrow. And then she will say, inshallah. And I'll be like, why do you have to say that? She'll be like, because I don't know if I'll see you tomorrow. But mm -hmm. I use that all the time. Like, inshallah, if Allah wills anything for me, I want it. Because sometimes I used to get really upset, for example, if I didn't get that job, if I didn't get, yeah, that job, that opportunity, like, why me? But then you don't know what Allah is saving you from. And I feel like it's really important to adopt an alhamdulillah mentality and as well as a mentality where our, we plan, but Allah plans and he's the best of planners. Mm -hmm. And his plan will never be it will always be for us. Even if it seems like it's not for us when you're in it, after you just be like, wow, that's what you were doing for me or planning for me. So I feel like that's like my kind of... I think, oh. sorry, I think also, I think with that mentality as well, I think it's the best man mentality to have. Cause I think sometimes when we don't get things, I don't think our viewpoint of what's going on is just literally just it's so minuscule, tiny, yeah. so minuscule. Our last plan is like so much bigger. He can see so much more. And I think I always like to think that anything that Allah doesn't give me is because he's got something even bigger that I can't even fathom. I agree. So it's like on the way, like sometimes you think, oh, like, yeah, like you didn't get this, but that's because, or you didn't, you didn't get this, something didn't happen. It's because something so much bigger, something so much better is coming. Like you can't even, you can't even fathom it because just like, you can't you can't see that far. Do you know what I mean? Like so I think that's the like best way to think hundred. Like quickly before that, I know you want to say something. Even like oh, the no. current role <laughs> the current role that I'm in, I remember doing the interview and like I'm a good talker, like and I can speak. So I knew the interview went well. But I remember leaving and I was just like, Allah like, I know this went well, but if honestly you know I'm not gonna be happy here and it's not for me, do not give it to me. Like I was I knew it went well, but I was like, I think I remember telling you yeah. like I don't want this job if it's not going to be good for me. Sometimes something can go up, but it's just not meant for you. Mm -hmm. Or you're, God knows I might not be happy there because in my current, in my previous role, I really didn't like it. So I was really big on ensuring that I liked my role and I was happy to go to work. So I said, Allah, if I get this role, then I know that you want, like it's going to be good for me and I'm going to be happy there. But if I honestly don't get it, even though the interview went well, then Alhamdulillah, because wow, I don't even know what you could be saving me from. Because mm -hmm. when I was interviewing, it seemed it was really great. But then I was thinking, okay, if I do get this role, am I going to like it? So when I did get it, I said, okay, Alhamdulillah, like, you think I can do it, so I'll take it with my chest. And, and yeah. I think also when you have that mentality, when quote unquote like bad things happen, you're, it's easier to stomach because it's like, you yeah. know, okay, I'm upset, but okay, charge it. Something big, something, <laughs> something. Oh, I charge, just I kidding, charge kidding, everything. Kidding. Just got, I take the biggest one. <laughs> charge it. Like, you just got to charge it and uh, you just know that, okay, just, you just hope and pray that Allah's got something bigger and better for you. I think that's how I, that's how I think, that's how I, I would say I have quite a, like a positive mindset about like life and whatnot. Cause then they, whatever Allah was, whatever it is, and as well, Allah doesn't give challenges to people he doesn't think can bear them. And I think sometimes Ooh. when things happen, it's like, oh, it's a bit too heavy. But it's like, you know what, like, and I think there's always says like, when problems happen, it's either you're gonna run towards Allah, or you're gonna run away. Mm. And it's always good to, even though in the moment it maybe be like God, like why, like God, why? Sometimes you okay, okay, like you just okay. I need to get, I need to start praying, making dua, and that in a sense it has a bigger thing. And you, you, you go to Allah, you pray, you feel better, you build that connection mm -hmm. with Allah, and then something amazing happens. You're like, yeah, that's what I mean. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, I'd even say, um, even you know, when these things happen, even if like a lot of times we're gonna be confused about you know the outcome of, of things that we wanted to go a certain way, like you know the 
the, um, this video was meant to happen before or whatever it didn't happen. I feel like sometimes just going back to Allah and just, you know, speaking to Allah, praying to Allah, making dua and stuff. It's just, it's not even you figuring out what's happening next or, or cause you won't know that Allah knows best, but it's just the peace that will bring, it, bring you. Like you can just be at peace that, you know, that's gone now. Cause now we, you know, we're here, Alhamdulillah, we're here now doing it. We're gonna forget about what happened before. Mm -hmm. And that, you, were you were stressing that day. And now, you know, <laughs> and I feel like it, that takes me back to, um, I, f I forgot which surah, I think it's Almeida, um, where Allah says, you know, perhaps something that you thought was gonna be good for you. Yeah, may maybe you wanna think that's, it's bad for you. Perhaps you want yeah. something, something it's bad for mm. you. But I have something, yeah. exact quote. I don't wanna uh, misquote, please. Just say but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, but then again, Allah knows best all the time. So I feel like, you know, we need to understand that at all times, even when things go horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. um, okay, cool. Yeah, I think it's going back to that. Sorry, oh, I didn't realize. The Alhamdulillah mentality, in terms of everything that happens, you're gonna say Alhamdulillah, regardless whether, it, you know, you lose or you win. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah. Um, Khadija, I'm just gonna ask you, as your hijabi, which is beautiful, um, <laughs> like, how did your, how do you start wearing hijab? And how do you like balance being modest in a society where modesty can, let's say, be frowned upon. And yeah, how do you do it so well? And yeah. <laughs> <coughs> so um, I started wearing hijab in year six because I had the intention I was gonna wear in year seven. So I thought like, I wore like part-time, like in like year six. No, not, not part-time, full-time but it's like still was kind of like still very casual i think i remember the first time my mom like told me to she's like oh like we don't have any school pictures with your hijab like take it um take it you know school picture day so i mean i must have been like second second and i remembered i ran up the stairs i got the hijab i literally pulled up in the in like my hand like this and then when it came i put it on i took see and i took it off and even whenever i look at that picture i just remember like the story beforehand but then i started wearing it in year like proper in like year seven i think my parents were very both mom and dad were very like yeah like they weren't like oh my gosh like you have to they're like oh like oh my gosh you need to like you have to like fire by force it's more like yeah like you should i think also because i grew up with like um i had like as I said before, like a strong um, Nigerian Muslim community. It's like, I saw the beauty in the hijab. I was like, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. Like, I want to wear the hijab. Like, it's so nice. And I think, because I saw all of that, it made me want to wear it. So when I did start to wear it, it was a lot easier. Because obviously, as well, like, the people that look like me, that I grew up with, they're also wearing it too. So it's like, okay, we're all doing this kind of like together. Even though, like, when I was in secondary school, I was only Nigerian Muslim in my year in college, only Nigerian Muslim in my year in uni, only Nigerian visibly, sorry, heavy on the visibly, mm -hmm. like Muslim, because there are definitely a lot of like Nigerian Muslims, but not all of them wear hijab. So I think it was hard in a sense, okay, being the only one in, I guess, your everyday like kind of environment, but because I had that community that, okay, like I can turn back to you or we'll see each other on the weekend or we'll go out, we'll do things I'm like, I still had that kind of, I guess, that re, I don't know what word to say. Yeah, reaffirmation, like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, we're doing this. And it's like, it was okay. I think there's still like, there's still a time when you're trying to find yourself, trying to find like, what you, what you like, what you don't like, or what you can wear, what you can't wear. Mm. Like I said, I think definitely I'm grateful for that community and I'm grateful for my parents, both of my parents for like, I guess, inserting me into such an environment because I think that definitely has helped me stay grounded in the face, stay grounded with my hijab. I don't think there's ever been a day that I've contemplated like oh, taking off. And I think as well, I think it's, it's because because then it, a it's silly because it's like I would, I feel like it's silly because like you've heard it down like how many years yeah, like we need to take it off now it's like pointless and on top of that because I know that if I take it off the this life is temporary and at the end of the day we don't know when we're gonna go right so it's just better okay I've started you know might as well just continue and I see the beauty in it it's not like say I saw even my little sister she started wearing hijab in um in she went to christian secondary school so obviously understandably you can't wear scarf that's okay 
So it's like, okay, cool now. Really? She, yeah. They don't allow you? No, nah, it was a Catholic school. Oh, oh. Yeah. Nah. That's, that's yeah. shocking. <laughs> so, well, from what we knew, it was like, you basically can't wear a scarf. And I was like, okay, you know, fine. That's okay. But and some they, Christians wear scarves. So. But yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, when she, yeah, when she, yeah. <laughs> so, when she, when she finished. <laughs> like, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. When she finished um, secondary school, okay, it's like, yeah, okay. So, you know gotta start wearing a scarf now and obviously i guess in a sense it was like hard because like that kind of like oh but i want to do this hairstyle and i want to do this hairstyle and i want to do and like you can still do those hairstyles but you just got just put a scarf on top do you know what mm. i mean um and i just try to ensure that i make sure that she sees the beauty in herself mm. i think it's hard it's hard when you're like growing up and you're not seeing people that look like you i think now it's definitely a lot better especially compared to black. yeah especially yeah. black as well because all of these all these people all these hijabis they're like either like east african mm -hmm. or like from saudi or from anywhere but like west africa yeah so i guess seeing i just try to make sure that she sees the beauty in the hijab because mm -hmm. i think it's sometimes it is because when beauty is so like tied to like hair all right <laughs> it's tight it's tied to hair it's like it's, or when you're used even more, like when you're even used to not wearing it, when you wear it, you feel like you're like capped. Mm. You you yeah. feel, because you're so used to like styling your hair, which is, I guess, part of your beauty and whatnot. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're capped. But I just had to make sure like, yeah, like, do you feel, you, you, you look beautiful, giving her that kind of, that reaffirmation that like, even if she doesn't feel it and I have to ask her, like, oh yeah, do you feel beautiful? She's like, yeah, she does. So, at the end of the day, like anyone else's opinions is invalid. Oh, yeah. it's, it's It doesn't matter because... At the end of the day, you're wearing it, not for others, not for me, not for mom, not for dad. You're wearing it for Allah. Yeah. And and that's why I would say it's also important to like, I hope that when I raise my children, inshallah, is that they see the beauty in it. Same way I saw the beauty in it. No one had to tell me, oh yeah, Kijo, like wear your scarf. I saw the beauty in it and I hope my children um, also see the beauty in it. Like, oh yeah, like, oh, I want to wear a scarf like mom or I want to wear a scarf like this person, that person. I think we're definitely getting better mm -hmm. compared to like what, like, 2011 yeah. mm. like you don't see you don't see no west african hijabis and whatnot so i think it was just um i guess just finding your style as well i think not everything that suits others will suit you mm -hmm. i think also learning how to dress for your like body type as well not everything that suits certain people is going to see always going to look the same on you and you just have to just okay do you, do you ever feel like, obviously not all your friends, mm. sure, like the friends you probably go out with, they're not hijabi. So mm. do you ever feel pressure when you go out in a certain environment, you're thinking, oh, people are looking at me. They yeah. might be judging me. I think, I think realistically, if you are in an environment, unless it's like, it's not that. If you're in an environment where you feel like people are like looking at you a certain type of way, it's probably because you shouldn't be in that kind of environment. Yeah, yeah that's what comes with wearing. And that's what comes with wearing the hijab, and that's why it's a. I would say it's a hundred percent. It's a blessing because you, you're constantly, and I think that's what it's, the, the hijab is a constant reminder of who you're, what you're here for, what you're doing, you, who you're worshiping, what you represent, what you represent. Like, and I get it. Like for some people, that is hard. That's a harsh. Like I was like because my sister as well, and even when I speak to other younger girls, they're like, oh, like, but if I wear a scarf, like, I'm going to have to change who I am. And I have to tell them, like, look at me, like, do you think I'm any different? They're like, oh, but I'm, like, I'm loud, I'm this, I'm that. I said, am I not loud, am I not this, am I not that? Like, just because you wear the hijab doesn't mean you can't be yourself. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. You mm -hmm. can definitely be yourself, but as you were saying, that you also have, like, it's good in a way because it prevents you from doing certain things yeah. which, which may not look right. Like we were saying earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not going to see her hijabi <laughs> in libertine. It's not going to, yeah. it doesn't look right. It's it's, just, yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> so, and being cool, no, you it's true. You're not going it's to hot. go. So even people say like, I'm still going to sin. Yeah, you might still sin, but you won't do certain things where people can see you. Like I if I, if me and you were to go out yeah. right now, they're probably going to think I'm the Christian because I don't and wear I hijab. So I don't, there's no representation for me. Yeah. Unless you speak to me, just like, okay, for example, when people hear my name, oh, your name's Mariam. And they start saying, are you Muslim? And one thing, yeah, I'm Muslim. I say it. I don't care yeah. what how I look that day. I'll tell you that I'm Muslim. But yeah. you, when you see you straight, you already know that you're Muslim. So there's yeah. certain places that I wouldn't, you I wouldn't, can't afford yeah. to be because it's going to look wrong even on Islam. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like when you wear yeah. hijab and that you actually represent Islam as a whole. Yeah. So even if they did an experiment and like someone was looking outside and you were, for example, drinking alcohol, people are going to stop and stare. They're going to be so shocked because it's like, what? <laughs> the representation of Islam is so yeah. pure and everything. But like, for example, if I'm looking at this and I did, no one's going to really look at me. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They're and not going to think, think I'm Muslim anyway. Yeah, and I think that's what I mean. Like, I think that's what's a blessing with the job because I think 
some people like maybe they want to wear hijab but they're like oh but i but i do this but i do that but i think with anything you do do it first and then everything else will follow. Mm-hmm. Whether if you want to wear hijab, wear the hijab. Everything else will follow. You're like, oh, like, but I struggle with, I don't know, going libertine. Let's just say that's. <laughs> let's just, using let's, just let's just say that's an example, or <laughs> no, like drinking or whatever. Like when you, if you're wearing the hijab, you're gonna feel that ah, uh, shouldn't we do? You're it? Just and feel uncomfortable. You're gonna be, you're gonna feel uncomfortable, and that uncomfortability mm-hmm. is a blessing from Allah because it's showing that you're. Your heart. Get out of there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I would even say that's like the protection of it because if you, I see I'm not sorry, I'm not a girl in this one. <laughs> but I would say if you're if you're wearing it, like even the things that you're gonna feel ashamed of doing, it's just because you, obviously you kind of represent an Islam visually mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the protection that hijab, hijab offers you as well. Mm. Yeah. So it might even start channeling you to do things more halal. Yeah, again, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. doing this. Or even sometimes let's say like you you've been consistent with your prayers. You might not even want to do that because you're thinking, oh, I've been so good, like me and Allah, like getting along. Yeah. So in your mind, you're thinking, nah, actually, I'm actually not going to do that because like I've been so patterned. And it's like, this. oh, like, so what, I'm going to pray and I'm going to do X yes, right after. It in, conflicts, yeah. Even if, it. obviously, Allah is the most merciful. 100%. And, thank God for his mercy because. <laughs> and that's yeah. enough. And I think that, I think the <laughs> well, mercy I that Allah has, it, it's honestly like, it's so... I can't even like I can't even fathom it. Like I think when people say, "Oh, like I'm a sinner, I can't, I can't um, repent, or I can't," Allah's not gonna feel me. I'm looking at you like, do you like that's that is basically that's an insult. Like, do you understand the the gra- the 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 gravity? Do you know understand how much Allah's mercy is? Do you mm-hmm. you can't even you can't even quantify it. So for you to say, "Oh, like I'm too much of a sinner," like there's no such thing as too much of a sinner. Every time you turn back, if you take two steps towards Allah, Allah will take four towards you. Right. If you, mm-hmm. if you, if you take like, like if you put it, reach out, He's gonna come and embrace you. So I think, mm-hmm. I think people need to always remember that and not get like too say, "Oh, like I'm too much of a sinner. I do this too much. I do that too much." Take two steps, Allah will take four. Reach your hand, He'll embrace you. Run, He'll fly. Come walking, to you. He will come running. Like literally, that's why I feel like it's repentance is so important and Allah there's so many avenues for God to forgive you it's like so crazy like even when you hear of things like just be like do this and Allah will forgive you it's like yeah, so he man. always wants you to call out to him and sometimes I can't lie I'm probably let's say I'm just not being the best Muslim just say for example but then again you go to Allah he's always going to want to listen to you even mm-hmm. if you're the, that's why first I don't judge anyone first you don't know what mm-hmm. they're doing behind closed doors they might look away but you know ne- they might never miss a prayer they might always be giving charity mm-hmm. just to, just being even forget that just being a good person because in in Islam is all about your intentions and your character character is so so important mm-hmm. so I don't judge anyone but knowing that Allah can always he's he always wants to forgive like Ramadan that we're in now alhamdulillah is literally forgiveness mm-hmm. we're doing this so God can forgive us like if we have a clean run we will be forgiven do you get what I mean yeah. so Allah's always, he always wants to um, forgive, but you just need to call out to him. He likes to hear the ones who've got, that's why he have things like Tahajjud, like call out to him and he will respond to you. That's why I'm mm-hmm. I'm so happy to be part of a religion where I have a God that's so merciful. Like he's mercy, okay. he's mercy you couldn't be able to comprehend it. You can't, I think when I like, when I think about it, it's like, it's so uncomprehendable. It's You can't even quantify it. And it's like, it makes you like emotional. It's like, how can and then again it's like oh then how can I do this and um let's say how can I sin obviously I don't know you know what sin is but how can I sin and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna be because I know I you know Allah's gonna forgive me but it's like keep on doing it do, keep on keep on repenting keep on asking for forgiveness keep on asking for guidance like keep on you know trying trying to be the best person you can I think the minute you stop or the minute you feel like you don't need to you should worry. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. that means, like, I mean, that was a. It's like a saying, like, that means your heart is black. If your heart yeah, is like black, you don't, if you don't feel, we need to have that yeah. guilt. Like, alhamdulillah, I hope we all have that guilt. Mm-hmm. But that guilt just shows you that you're a believer. You yeah. still got a bit of someone that doesn't have guilt for me is just more concerning because you now you actually you might really you need don't, to pray. You don't. You don't you care. Like that's the way of life. Yeah. yeah. So, so I was just gonna say quickly. Yeah, I really love like how like in Islam everybody is there to support you, like whether you've just taken your shahada or whether you've been a Muslim since you were born, as soon as like you walk into the mosque, like we're all on the same like wavelength in a sense. And it's like, you can ask a question and no one's gonna look at you like you're weird or like, why would you not know that kind of thing? Like, I just really love that about Islam. Like no one that turns a blind eye or just like judges you 
if I don't know how to say this or if I don't know how to say that, sorry, like everybody is there to help you at any given point. Mm, I agree. Going back to um, Cleese's point, I was going to say earlier, obviously, like I don't make a job and inshallah, Allah will make inshallah. it easy mm-hmm. for all of yeah. the girls that don't because yeah. it is a journey and I don't judge anyone who wears it and I just don't judge, sorry, I don't judge anyone who doesn't wear it because you just, everyone has their own things that they're battling. So just inshallah, like even if you're watching this and you don't wear it, May Allah give you the strength mm-hmm. and ability to wear it because mm-hmm. even though I don't wear it, I know it's beautiful and mm-hmm. I would want to one day and it's just sure. me. Now, I don't know in it. So like, inshallah, sure. he can make it easy for all of us. Mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. So the f- final segment I wanted to talk about, it's like racism and like looking down upon because we're black. And like, do you have any examples where, you know, you've been belittled or someone has, um, what's that? word someone has made you feel like because you're black you might not have that islamic knowledge or ability but then it's just like oh i actually do um so do you have any examples if you face racism or if someone has just basically belittled you because you're black because i'm going to be very honest not all but a lot of people who are not black some do i feel like some people do feel so more superior or that they they're more woke about islam than people who are black Mm -hmm. and i don't know why that is and yeah go on i said that for me i don't know if he's putting it, but the most annoying thing is right, it's when you say, oh, I'm Muslim. And then they say, oh, were you a river or were you born? <laughs> Someone said, and when I was working in Rita, like, can you pray? Yeah. Someone said, recite a surah with her, and she was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, <laughs> and then um, there's uh, another one when they say, um, that's insane. Oh, what country are you from? Mm. It's yeah. like, it doesn't really matter what country I'm from. I'm Muslim. I'm Muslim. I'm Muslim. Why are you asking you know all of these? I'm from the, the question. question. You know, like, yeah. Like, yeah, man, that's my experience all the time. You know what? I think when I went to Morocco, um, went in summer, I think, oh, we're like, yeah, we're Muslim. Like, they were like, oh, yeah, like, what, um, are you guys Muslim? Yeah, like, Salaam Alaikum. Like, oh, like, read a surah. That's what he said. Like, he said, like, he, he, said, said he said, he said, like, he said, oh, no, read a surah. I was like, for that, you are not getting our coins. We're going to go to somewhere else. <laughs> that is absolutely. And it's so funny because we won't look at a, like an Arab and be like, can you say Fatiha? Like, we yeah. want to do that yeah. because we, firstly, we we'll expect them to know, but we just respect mm. that they will. Yeah. yeah. But, and mind you, like, I think it's just 20% of Arabs that are Muslims. So it's like, we still don't do that, that mm-hmm. generalization. I feel like this all obviously stems on like general anti-blackness in a lot of yeah. these places. Yeah. Um, and obviously people being so stuck in their communities and not uh, not actually looking outside as well. Because uh, I feel like a lot of people, a lot of people, they actually mean well, like they, they, they're actually not actually racist, but it's just their lack of knowledge, their, their ignorance is what makes them ask certain questions. Like, you know the same the, the thing about the the country and stuff. They just didn't know that a country outside of where they're from could be Muslim because they just yeah. thought every every country in their area is Muslim. They just don't have that. And I feel like that also comes uh, is is to do with the, like, I don't know the parents or all the people in their communities that don't actually expose them to the to the wider world of Islam as well. So I kind of I feel like yeah, it's also on the parents as well. Uh, it's both things is ignorance and obviously the racism which is taught as well in many cases so how do you feel like about because i feel like some cultures even probably within our cultures about like dating outside of your race or like mar- marrying outside of your race and stuff like some cultures that make it very clear they don't want like black people and stuff and even with the black community they might just say stay in your community like how do you what are your thoughts on that as well i think <laughs> i think i think why is that so- <laughs> <laughs> Going, man. No, I was, I was just gonna <laughs> say. Obviously, Islam. Allah told. Uh, obviously, Allah says that you, we we made you from different nations so you can get, get to know each other and stuff. Yeah. So that's kind of obvious. I feel like people just a lot of times, whatever culture they're from, whatever race, they're just so stuck in their it's more their, tra- stuck in their ways. It's more tribalism as well. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. a lot. Of, you know, Islam came to not to erase culture, but in to, to improve certain things. Because we mentioned earlier how certain things, certain aspects of cultures are obviously haram and obviously they shouldn't be happening. And this thing about marriage is another thing. Like even, you don't even need to leave race. You can be in the same country, just two different ethnic groups and parents don't want you to I go into I think it's a lot of stereotypes group. as well. Yeah. Like realistically. Tribalism as well. Right? Yeah, tribalism. Like, like tribalism. you can't, like realistically, like, I'm, oh no, like, Marrying a Jamaican Muslim, who? Let's say you. If I wanted to marry a Jamaican, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to say some cultures they. I'm okay, not do you know what specifically? Is, I'm just saying that like, it's a lot of stereotypes. Black like, Africans, I'll say they like to be familiar. 
Yeah. But I feel yeah. like other cultures are like that as well. That's why I'm not like blaming like other cultures. No, I'm just are saying. Black people. I'm even saying us ourselves sometimes, they yeah. like to be familiar. So if I'm Ivorian, it's like, let me just be an Ivorian or yeah. an someone in West Africa because we relate more. Marrying a Jamaican is foreign to them, so they wouldn't understand that at first. But I guess with conversations, like no, but I'm just. I'm and listen, if I want to marry someone, I believe as long as they are Muslim, yeah, mm. and they my non-negotiables are there that they match, I should be able to marry them, and that's what Allah says. So I feel like parents need to be very, very careful with doing that because you will be judged for it, that's and that's why a lot of people to parents, might you end up doing things that you know let's say zin or whatever, because it's just like, I wanted to marry this person, he didn't want me to marry them, so let me, let me go and do what I want to do. But really and truly, you should be able to marry anyone that's, I guess, Muslim and that's yeah. good and, and can take care of you. Yeah, so and a lot like, of parents, I think they don't really, obviously, kind, a lot of them kind of pick pick and choose as well what they want to be from the dean or not. And right. oh. in a lot of cases, it's going be, to be accountable <laughs> towards them. Because I, I remember my friend was telling me, he knew this, this person that was looking for marriage. Um, she came with a few potentials, but that, but and they were good people, like, mm -hmm. you know, Muslim, whatever, practicing, whatever, all, all good. But the dad didn't let them because they were not the same ethnic group. They mm -hmm. were from the same country, whatever. It was my, my country even. Mm -hmm. But it's just because they were not from the same ethnic group. Yeah, and obviously fabulous. this person now is, is depressed and stuff, doesn't know what to do. Obviously now this person might go their whole lives without getting married because their parents didn't let them. And obviously that's going to be accountable on them. Mm -hmm. But... Again, it's just I feel like experience being so stuck in 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 the culture and stuff, and that's an important thing to separate from Islam as much as possible. Because even like people that are not Muslim as well, a lot a lot of times I, I hear people saying, "Oh, like you guys do this in Islam," and it's like, <laughs> you think you seen this? It's because there's a, mu a Muslim community did this, and people f people thought hey, this is Islam. Because obviously these people are visually Muslim, where they did this, and because you don't you don't even know yourself. But a lot of Muslims, even I spoke to Muslims that thought that certain things were actually of Islam. But it's culture. Like, yeah. like um, FGM. Oof. Right. Like people thinking that was Islamic. And I was like, when oh, they like female, 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 yeah. So yeah, so I feel like it's very important as a Muslim, especially like understanding how to separate. And that's why, again, doing your own mm -hmm. research, your own, your, doing your own journey and understanding for yourself. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times our own parents are going to teach us things that are wrong. Because mm. of because of their own upbringing, mm. and, you know, misinformation can be passed through generations, and I feel like to this day it still happens. So, for sure, yeah. Adam, what would you say you feel like some of the like misconceptions are of black people and um, black Muslims? Like, um, I'll probably say that one we don't we're not we're not knowledgeable. Right. I'll say two we, we practice our own type of Islam. Um, and I say free, we're quite, people assume that we're quite um, casual Muslims, like, mm -hmm. like we practice it as and when we choose to, we're not like full-time Muslims, that, if that makes sense. I probably say, in my experience, those are like the three things that people always hold up against um, against us. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's weird because, like, historically speaking, like, West Africa specifically, has got a lot of um, historical artifacts that are Islamic from like mm -hmm. hundreds of years ago. And especially like Mali, them kind of countries there, first, first like so many first. things are there, but because the knowledge is not there, people assume that we don't know our religion, you know? And I think that's quite a annoying thing that I encounter a lot, you know? Mm. Yeah, I was even I was even gonna say I feel like one of the most important things as well as um as a black Muslim is actually learning your your history and to understand your identity, mm. to understand that you know your people been Muslim for hundreds of years, and it's like how did they how did they get there how did they pass around and stuff. I feel like it's very important, and yeah, I feel like it's something that you, we need to explore thoroughly because I've come across a lot of people that was like, a lot of people kind of just accept that oh yeah. Arabs have like the main whatever they do it's like we should follow and it's like, I'm like mm. even you know they they wear thobes and stuff but it's like we you, that's not that's their culture it's actually not like something that you have to wear like you have your own clothes and stuff you're still Muslim do you know what I'm gonna say you can still do things whatever but you're Muslim and you you know there's no such thing as um oh, I forgot the word but it's like some people think that certain things that are Arab it's like that's like Islamic mm. and I feel like that's a very important thing to separate because even sometimes I'm speaking to my mom and she's like 
oh, this is the Arabs do that. That's that you do that because it's Arab. I'm like, bruv. <laughs> bruv. No, 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 no. <laughs> Damn, you talking to your mama yeah, like no, that? Uh, <laughs> talking to your mama like that? No, no, no. But but sometimes I just have to, you know, kind of. Tell my mom, getting like, frustrated. Does, does, they get easy. That's not. That's not. <laughs> it's time to break past the road. Because like my mom is like she's like one of them old school people in it. I say I have locks in it. So my mom was like, oh. If you go with locks in the mosque, they're, gonna, they're not going to let you in. Yeah, but they don't know. Like, my brother has, he says, well, but if it's a cultural thing, but it's actually yeah. permissible. But a lot of cultural Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you get lost in that. Yeah, but the thing is, she thinks uh, if I don't have the hair, like, <laughs> whatever the Arabs do, um, um. I'm not not going to be allowed. Uh, so sometimes just some things that I'm like, you know, it's due to lack of knowledge as well. Again, yeah. like, going back to when I think of... Because before I, I get annoyed or whatever, I think about, like, you know, how my mom grew up and stuff and what she was exposed to. She was exposed to, like, war and things like that. She was born before my country was independent. So it's like she was exposed to all the war and stuff. She, she didn't really... She was obviously helping um, at home and things like that. So she didn't really have time to go to school and, like, Islamic school and stuff to learn things and, you know, be knowledgeable to a good level in Islam. So... Yeah, so I just think about that as well. I feel like we need to sometimes when our parents say and do certain things, we need to kind of like think about how they were brought up so we can understand them as well. Yeah. Did you want to say something about it? Um, yeah, I feel like there's, there's a lot of misconceptions, but it's like you have to talk to people to understand. So like my friend there, <laughs> OJ, <laughs> I was talking to the other day and what was he talking about? I can't remember what he was talking about, but the conversation came down to... Um, uh, Noah's Ark so I was like I told him pigs were created to go on Noah's Ark so they can clean up the mess of other animals and then he was like to me oh raw, you lot believe in Noah's Ark as well and it's like over the years just little comments like that I, was, I noticed that the knowledge that I have not everyone else has so it's like some of my friends that are not Muslim they wouldn't know that you as a Muslim you also now believe in Noah's Ark you also now believe in uh, Moses and the part in the Red Sea you yeah. also now believe in in Solomon, David, Isaiah, mm -hmm. all of these people, Jesus, Muhammad, Abraham, all of these people, we also believe in. So it's like, I told one of my other friends as well, like go and read Surah Maryam. In Surah Maryam, there's literally stories of literally most of the biblical people is also now in the Quran. So uh, I noticed that when talking to my, I like talking to my non-Muslim friends about Islam because like they can learn little things that I would just assume that you know, because one of my other friends, one time was talking and he was like, um, oh, Ra, you lot worship Muhammad same way we worship Jesus to get free to God. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, stuff for Allah is impossible. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, so, yeah, Jesus is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, exactly. I was like, as a Muslim, you can't worship through yeah. someone's way, only worship Allah, not yeah. through anyone. Right. And then it's like, oh, I thought you prayed to him and I thought you like you prayed to the black box as well. I was like, no, we don't pray to that as well. <laughs> like, there's so many misconceptions that you wouldn't know unless you actually have a conversation with mm -hmm. people. And that's why... I like my non-Muslim friends because it's like, as much as I learn from them, they learn from me mm -hmm. and the little knowledge that I have, because they're not gonna they're not gonna know any sheikhs or any any imams or any hadiths or any prophets or any anything. Mostly, what they're gonna know about Islam is what they've seen me do or what they've seen me say. Mm -hmm. So obviously now you may you might have a few like celebrities or influencers that are also Muslim, but or maybe like neighbors, um, work colleagues, whatever. But mm -hmm. most of what they know is through me so i need to make sure that i'm representing right. in a good way because if i was like a, a a prick or an idiot sorry um they might look at at me and be like it's because he's muslim or whatever mm -hmm. so i need to make sure my character is always 10 10 is always on point mm -hmm. because there's a hadith that says there's nothing more weighty there's nothing more heavy on the on the um there's nothing more heavier in weight on scales than good character and good manners so that's something i always try to have yeah and my friends that are non-Muslim, they can, anything that they know, they might be like, cool, I've seen AK wash, I've seen him pray, I've seen him say this, I've seen him not eat that. And it's like the little, little that they're picking up over the years, most of it, I don't notice, but at the same time, like I'm representing a religion to them. Mm. And who knows one day they might be like, all right, I want to learn. Some of them even come and said to me in private, uh, teach me more about the religion, tell me more. Some of them fast with me. Some of them um, come to Jummah with me. Like just little things that they pick up, whether they take the Shahada or not, that's between them and God. But Literally, a lot of what they know, and something I'm proud about, a lot of what they know about their religion Come from you. is just literally through my, through me, mm. and I don't even know much. So that's something I always try to um, tell myself that I always got to remain on point. I can't, I can't go and uh, scam someone, or can't go and do someone dirty or beat someone up or whatever because 
at the end of the day, I'm a minority within my environment. So mm. I'm representing a, a religion at the, at the end of the day. So I've got to make sure I'm on point. And people, your friends or people around you take your religion as seriously as do you do? Say that again? So people around you, your friends, take your religion as seriously okay, as yeah, you yeah. do. So a lot of people, the reason why people that are not even Muslim respect Islam is because of the way Islam is. Like, the, even the month of the discipline, Ramadan, I've seen a lot of Christians who are fasting. Yeah, month, yeah, by yeah. The way. a lot of my friends They're are joining in on it. And a it's just like, yeah. we personally wouldn't do that with that, like, in we wouldn't like follow any like traditions that they're probably yeah. doing but a lot of people respect islam because i would say it's a religion of um discipline and it's yeah. just like you want i feel like a lot of people in life you're looking for discipline if you're as you discipline, grow older you start you start to see the discipline it brings yeah the, if you, the structure if the consistency you start to see all of these things in life just be a muslim and i feel like when you're a sort of person that's disciplined and you know you have morals and even if your friends are not muslim they're gonna admire that and they will really respect you for that and i feel yeah. like islam is really good at like showcasing that. One hundred percent. Okay, we're gonna speak on friends, and then we're just gonna end it there with like one thing we've learned from Islam. But anyways, yeah. so to how? Okay, kick us off then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would say um, friends are a very, I guess, can be a very pinnacle part in your um, journey with faith. I think even I think um, appreciate both my Muslim and non-Muslim friends. I think they definitely do like support me. They definitely do like ensure, okay, yeah, it's a halal. Oh, like make sure they were going out to eat. Oh yeah, is the restaurant halal? Oh, um, oh yeah, like can she get a mocktail? What mocktails do you have? The, all these kind of things, all those kind of like small adjustments that make you feel more comfortable. Like not to say not inviting you to X fire place because they know that you don't go or you're not comfortable going going to these places. I think friends can like help you, I guess once again become grounded because when they're taking you so seriously you're like yeah like oh like i gotta be serious as well do you know what i mean and i think as well when you're serious they're gonna take you serious so it's yeah. like a it's a two-way um two-way transaction kind of um kind of thing so i say i'm definitely grateful for both like my muslim friends for keeping me grounded but definitely also my non-muslim friends for also being accommodating I'm and respectful. also i'm respectful yeah. Yeah. and like making those like little adjustments and you know I think even like for example like finding like a halal Nando's like I was with my friend like the other day and I think it was in like what happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> no, I don't even. Know. Oh god! Yeah, yeah, not Where all Nando's. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not one halal. <laughs> yeah, no, nah. Say so it's not. Nah, it's not halal. <laughs> stop. I mean the subway in Peckham is halal. The yes, oh yeah, we know that. Halal. Halal. <laughs> I know that. I've been taking a lot of things from there. Pepperoni me up. <laughs> <laughs> and literally like oh, wait, we were, like, I think it was in like Central and she was like oh yeah like this going on there I was like yeah but I don't think this one is halal like the closest one okay. I know Brixton one's halal the one in East London is halal Stratford is halal and she's like nah she's like nah how can it not be halal like how's like they're not like how's this place not halal like this is just not fair I think that kind of like that frustration like yeah like it's not easy and she's like she's like nah like how like it's not fair da -da -da -da. so I think just always trying to accommodate that makes me feel comfortable that makes me you know feel you know yeah definitely makes you feel more comfortable and you mm -hmm. know i can like open up and all these kind of things which i think as well is an important part of you know friendship even though we are of like different faith we definitely still consolidate i mean we definitely still like we still have a joint point on like worshiping god and the importance of worshiping god and you know staying steadfast and even though we are of different faith we still like kind of like ground each other. Yeah. So I would say that's definitely a good thing about yeah, my friends. Yeah, I'd say um I know you wanted to speak, sorry. No, <laughs> just, my, just don't forget your point. Um yeah. yeah, I'd say all my friends uh, are supportive. My non Muslim friends, my Muslim friends. So my Muslim friends in Ramadan will message each other like let's go break fast here. Um send me video like Miriam sends me videos as well to watch. Um videos on TikTok. You be airing them. <laughs> My mom has everyone on TikTok. I, yeah, I do, but if I send <laughs> So don't I worry about it. At least send good stuff. But yeah, my Muslim friends, they send me stuff to watch. Um, my non-Muslim friends are very supportive as well because it's, it's one thing being friends with people and it's just all you can do is just have a good time and yeah. have fun and whatever. Yeah. But once you reach like 22, 23, 24, it's like you need more from life. And it's like you can't just be my friend because we have fun together. Yeah. And it's like I reach that point in my friends and it's like, I'm so happy that all of my friends that like, we I can actually like or I can call him and like we can talk for like an hour or two hours about proper stuff like mm -hmm. and it's like real life mature yeah that yeah, oh. like, he can learn from me I can learn from him and it's like it's so great how 
all of my friends, like, they're all supportive. Some of them are fasting with me. Some of them ask me, oh, what does this mean? Why do you not do this? Mm -hmm. What benefits do you gain from it? Some of my friends privately, they come to me that um, they're looking into, like, taking the Shahada, but they're scared of the backlash from their fr from their families and like so many of my friends they come and talk especially in Ramadan but even people that I'm not especially close to but because mm. I'm open with how I practice my religion on like my socials or whatever people who are not I'm not especially close to they'll come to me and be like oh bro I need help with this I'm looking into the religion I've seen that Islam is very simple like I've always in my head I've always um kind of aligned with it because when I when I take away the bias or the ignorance that like, it actually makes sense and then I'll talk to them in private and obviously I'll never um tell them what to do I'll just put them in the right direction okay read this book read that book listen to this um lecture whatever if you feel like it resonates with you i can put you in the direction of this mosque or this imam mm -hmm. he can do more for you because only so much i can do for you i'm not that knowledgeable and yeah just in general i feel like i'm surrounded by good people both muslim and non-muslim and we all learn from each other yeah, sure. yeah i was gonna say um in terms of friendships um i think i like obviously having i've banished so both as well I would say with my Muslim friends, alhamdulillah, they, in terms of rem reminding me of the most simple things or, um, you know, kind of pushing me to the right path in terms of my practice as well. I'm very grateful for them as well. But I'm also grateful for my non-Muslim friends that, you know, they, they, they're very respecting of, the, of, of my whole deen, my, you know, my deen and stuff. And I think they give me a different perspective of life as well. Mm. Kind of, obviously, them not being Muslim kind of makes me think about other things as well in general so i feel like there's obviously an advantage but one thing that i would say as well in terms of you know having and it, i think there's obviously an importance of having people of the same faith as well because one thing i always think about is you know death you know if you die mm -hmm. who's going to be there f to pray janazah for you as well mm -hmm. so i feel like it's it's one of the f one of the things i always think about you know always tell people yeah it's good to have you know both as well but always think you know, people of the same faith, like these are the people that are going to pr pray in your janazah. These are the people that are going to fill up the mosque as well and, you know, be there for you, for your family and stuff. So, yeah, I think that's... Also, I think it's the, the saying that says, oh, you should be around people that remind you of Allah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you get from your, like, Muslim friends. And also, I guess you probably do get it from your non-Muslim friends, but more from your Muslim friends because, like, and that constant reminder of, I guess you see them, okay, I want to do better, I want to learn this, I want to do this, and that kind of constant like motivation. Mm -hmm. So I would say, yeah, that's also very important in friendship. Uh, to finish off, um, you can it could be like a quote or verse from the Quran or just like one thing Islam has taught you. I mean, I'll just say mine quickly because I don't want to spend too long. Um, is that nothing really matters like in this life, as much as this life is a test and God create like Allah created this dunya, but nothing actually matters. The most important thing is just, doing good deeds, I guess, to help with your Akira, because that's literally, the, God doesn't care if you're like a prime minister, you have money. All he's actually gonna care about is your deeds. So just ensuring that, sometimes when I get a bit overwhelmed about life, I just think like, God doesn't even care that one. I don't really care. As long as I'm being good and I'm praying, and you know, and I'm being a good person and I'm just seeking knowledge, and I die with good deeds, that's the most important thing. So not being overwhelmed so much about things that happen, because at the end of the day, all of this is gonna end anyway. We're all gonna perish. Mm -hmm. sadly so yeah just reminding myself about that whenever i get too worked up about affairs in the dunya so yeah i was gonna say um there's this like video it's like probably one of my favorite videos video and he's that. like i have everything okay. because i'm muslim and like if i have everything and i'm like no something like yeah i have everything because i'm muslim and if I now have everything but I'm not Muslim, then I'm finished basically. And like, I actually probably go to that video near all the time because it really resonates with my soul because literally everything I have, the way I walk through this life is because of Allah and because I follow Islam. And if you take all of that away from me, then I would be done. Yeah, I'd say, um, I'd say patience, you know, sabr is one of the f biggest things that I take from, you know, being Muslim and the more I learn, and in every situation of my life, whether, you know, I'm waiting for good news or, but, or some bad news came, I think I always, tr like, always remember Allah, Allah, Allah's put me in that position. And I have to, again, trust in Allah in every, in every step of life. And, you know, just looking forward to, to do things in a, in a, um, you know, disciplined manner, in the right manner, in a, in a way that's going to satisfy Allah. And it's going to, you know, benefit me as well. Um, I would say, um, uh, what I've learned most or what I love most is I guess trusting in Allah. I think it's easy to 
unpurposely like not trusting Allah and I think it's very very important to trust in Allah because at the end of the day Allah wakes you up Allah makes you sleep Allah is what can is the reason why your your air your lungs are able to fill with air and you can breathe so why do you not trust him if you can get on a plane and it, you know trust that the pilot's gonna get you to your destination why can't you trust that Allah's got the you know greatest plan for you so I think just constantly remind myself just trust in Allah trust in his plan because at the end of the day Allah is the greatest of planners and you know that's all we mm-hmm. have I think that's the best way for us to end it so you love it <laughs> but honestly I want to say thank you guys like for being part of this like may Allah reward us thank forgive you. us and ensure that you know we make it to Jannah thank inshallah you. but I've honestly I really appreciate all your contributions and hope that this conversation was even beneficial for you guys yourselves so I don't want to keep everyone and that's really thank it you. <laughs>